Hi, this is Gail with Be a Jewelry Diva. You know, we've been making all these wonderful bracelets and necklaces and everything like that. Let's talk about making some clasps so that you can have a homemade, or excuse me, a artisan-made clasp in, to go along with your artisan-made bracelets, necklaces, etc. So first we're going to do what I call the double-wrapped hook and eye clasp. So it looks like this. So it has a much thicker wrap down towards the bottom of it. So I think it's a classier look than your standard hook and eye. And then we're going to do the S clasp. So we're going to do everything from a simple S clasp up to something that's just a little bit more different for an S clasp. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the different kinds of clasps we can make. And let's go ahead, get started, and before I forget, if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Okay, let's get started. Let's talk about supplies. We are going to need some round nose pliers. I've got a regular pair, and I've also got a long nose pair that has a wider base to it. I've got myself a pair of flush cutters. I've also got to use for a dowel. I have an old paintbrush that has a fairly thick end to it, so if you don't have some long nose pliers, Get yourself a paintbrush, makeup brush, whatever. You'll be using 18 gauge wire for the S clasps, and you're going to be using 22 gauge wire for the double wrapped hook and eyes. And I'm using copper today. You can obviously use whatever wire you would like, but I'm using copper because that's kind of what I have. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good for demoing. For the first double wrap loop uh, hook and eye clasp, we're going to work with a 22 gauge wire. So again, this is about six inches long. I'm going to take my round nose pliers. I'm going to come down maybe about two thirds of the way, maybe two or three, eh, two inches or so. And I'm just going to go ahead and make myself a wrap loop. So it doesn't really matter what size your eye is, just, you know, large enough so that you're going to be able to fit your jump ring of choice through here. So I've got my little P shape. I'm going to grab my flat nose pliers just because it's easier for me to wrap this way. And I'm just going to start making wraps. Now I'm going to try to go a little on the slow side and make the wraps carefully. You want them to be close to each other, lying right next to each other. And I like to have somewhere in the vicinity of six to eight wraps. Depends on really how big my clasp is going to be, but that's usually in a, a good I, good area to, to do it in. Okay, so I've got this. I'm going to take my cutters, if I can find them, and trim off the tail. So this is what I've got on to part two. So I've got this piece, it's uh, four-ish or so inches long. I'm going to come up and, here they are, I'm going to come up about, oh, three quarters of an inch or so. I've got, I've grabbed it with my flat nose pliers and I'm just going to bend this over. So I'm bending it down. Now I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to gently try pressing these together. So you, you want to be gentle with it. You don't want to get all rowdy. So, so you want them parallel. Now I'm going to grab down by where the wraps are. So I'm going to snug my pliers right up to those wraps. I'm going to take this end and I'm going to wrap over the original wraps. And be careful and be slow when you do this because you want your wraps to be very even. And I can see mine were just not quite even. It's because I'm on camera. I'll go ahead and blame it on that. So mine weren't as even as they could be, but it's still not too terribly bad. So I've got this. And okay. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to nip off the tail. So tail nipped. I've got this. 
Now I'm going to take my flat nose pliers, I'm going to grab it at the very tip, and I'm going to bend it up just a little bit. So I've got this little lip to it. Now I'm going to take, I think, my dowel this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dowel, which is just an old paintbrush, and I'm going to put the, the lip right about at the top, and I'm going to bend this around. Now about halfway or so through, I'm going to take a look and see if I like the, the size of this. If I do, I'm just going to keep bending it around. If I don't, I could move it up or down on my little uh, dowel. So I've got it looking like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm putting it back on. I'm going to take my fingernail and I'm going to gently push in. So now this looks like this. So first we're going to do a traditional S clasp. I've already done a loop on this end and I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to make a loop going in the opposite direction on the other end. And if they aren't going in the opposite direction, if you kind of goof up, that's okay. We can fix that. So I've got the loops going in two different directions. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, long nose pliers because, again, they have the wide base. But you can use anything you feel like, you know. Don't, don't think that you have to use the long nose. And I'm just going to bend it around. So this is what it's, it's looking like. Then I'm going to take the other end. And I'm going to put it in the same way. I'm going to make it so that the, the loop is facing away from me. And I'm going to bend it around. So this is your traditional S-clasp. This next one, I've started out the same way. I've got that little P-shape down at this end. I'm going to take my round nose pliers. I'm going to put it in so they're facing this way. And then I'm going to bring this side up and around so it looks like this. Now I'm going to take this end and I'm going to put it, oh, let me use the other pliers. I'm going to put it right about here, I guess, towards the, the thicker end. And I'm going to roll it around and I'm going to roll it around twice. So it makes kind of a double loop. For this one, I'm going to use a slightly longer piece. I think this is about three and a half inches of the 18 gauge wire. And I'm going to put a loop on the end, same as, same as always. So a little loop on the end. You know, mush it down a little bit if you can. There we go. Then I'm going to take I think this time I'm going to use my paintbrush and I'm going to grab it like this and push this around. So you can see I've got it looking like this, which I don't like at all, but which I can fix because I can just push it up to a wider part of my um, paintbrush, pull this back a little bit, push this around and I can reshape my loop if I need to. So troubleshooting, I like my loop a lot better this time. All right, for this other end, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to create a gentle loop on this end. So it's not gonna be a full loop, but I want it a little bit more than that, I think. So about like this. Then I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and I'm going to start making a spiral of sorts. 
So I'm going to start with a standard spiral. I do have a video on, on spirals. And then when I get it to about here, I'm going to make sure that my spiral starts touching. So see what I mean by it starts touching? And now I'm going to brace with my hand, I've with my pliers, I'm bracing it here, and I'm moving it with my left hand. So I'm trying to make it a little bit more of a gentle curve. So I've got something that looks like this. I think I'm going to do a little bit more of a curve. Okay, so I've got it looking like this. Now in here, I want to make it a little bit more closed. So very carefully, I'm going to grip the end and pull it up some. So you can see that my spiral kind of uh, looks centered. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it up. So what I've done is I've taken my uh, round nose pliers and I've just squished these two together. So what I've got is my loop is touching up at the top. And then down here, I have an area where I can go ahead and put my jump ring. Now, if I think that this is still um, not enough of an area to put in like an 18 gauge jump ring or so, I can go ahead and tighten this up just a little bit more. So then I have something like this. Okay, this time I have about a three and a half inch piece of um, wire. And this is 18 gauge still. I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to come in to about the middle. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should be pretty close. I'm going to grab it towards the tip and I'm going to bend this one around and then I'm going to bend this one around. So now it's got kind of an S shape. I'm going to go ahead and refine that S shape. I'm going to bend each side around a little bit more. So you can see it's becoming a little bit more of a wave, maybe. So just fiddle with it a little bit until you've got it about where you like it. That's about where I like it. And now you can see that my ends are very, very different in length. So what I'm going to do is cut them so that they're about the same length. That looks about right. So now I've got these looking like this. So where do we go from here? What I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to bend. First, I'm going to make my little tiny loop and I'm going to make it towards the inside. So in other words, I'm going towards these little loops down here. So now it looks like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Remember, we want our little loops going in opposite directions, so I'm going to bend this so these go in. Oops, I didn't flush cut this end. Shame on me. Okay, so I've got it pretty much looking like that. Now, obviously, you want to refine these shapes a little bit more, but for the purposes of this, I'm going to take my dowel this time and I'm going to take my thumb, put it, place it so that the little loop is on top of my thumb and then I'm just going to bend this around. Now I don't like the looks of that so far, so what I'm going to do is you can change your loop a little bit by shoving it a little bit further along and then bringing it back some. There we go. I like that loop a little bit more. So now you can see that it looks kind of like we've got the wave here in the middle and then we've got this loop up here. Now we're going to do the same thing on this end. I'm going to take it so that we've got our um, 
our tiny loop sitting on top of our thumb and then move this back once again I don't know why I keep getting this one wrong whoopsie daisy so I've got something that looks like this so I, th I think that's kind of cool looking but we've got to refine that just a little bit so I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to close the loops then I'm going to look at it and say, okay, what do I need to do to make this a little bit more balanced? Because right now it looks kind of cockeyed. <laughs> so I'm going to take my, my flat nose pliers and I'm going to slightly grip this. I'm going to push, pull this one back just a little bit. I'm going to come up here, push this one back a little bit. So I'm going to straighten them out just a tiny bit so that until I've got something that I like the looks of. So now you have an idea of some of the clasps that you can make. <clears throat> we have these which um, are I kind of like to call the light bulb clasps <laughs> with the double wrap loops. Um, these are a lot of fun to make. Actually just go ahead, get started, make a bunch of them and that way you'll always have some around. Then we've got the different S clasps. You can see my different take on S clasps. You can also see that I went ahead and wrapped, did some coils around with this one. I hammered this one. So there's all sorts of stuff that you can go ahead and do with all these clasps. Um, S clasps don't just have to look like an S. And hook clasps don't have to look as plain as just a plain old wrap loop. I think this looks a little bit more finished. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. This is Gail signing out saying have yourself a great day. Bye.